glory, 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 glory. Glory and praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. You deserve the praise and the glory. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God forever. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord of Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Valencia Woodward Macaulay. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Welcome. Uh, Bishop Dwayne, welcome. Welcome, Evangelist Ojoade. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you, Maricela, Marcelo, Marcela Parks. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Welcome. And thank God it's another Friday. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come to bless his holy name. Let's begin to welcome the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for another Friday, another end of the week, another time to celebrate, another time to bless the name of the Lord. Welcome, welcome, men of God and women of God. Let's give God the glory and the praise and say, Father, we come to bless you, O God. We come to honor you because you are faithful. We come to adore you because you alone deserve the glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping me through another week. Thank you for your blessings over my household. Thank you for your goodness over my life. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness over my business, over my calling, over my ministry, over the assignment that he has stationed you over. And you want to thank God because he's faithful. You want to thank God because he's a good, good father. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give him the praise and give him the glory. Let's say, Lord, we honor you. Lord, we bless you in the name of Jesus. Welcome, Pastor Nancy Savante. Bienvenido, Dios te bendiga. In the number of the Señor Jesus Christ. Let's say, Lord, we honor you. Father, we thank you because you have been so good to me. You have been so good to my family. You have been so good. Ricardo, Amado, Eduardo, Resenzis, Bienvenido, Bienvenido, in the number of the Señor Jesus Christ. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You want to thank him because of everything he's bring you through. Everything that he has been there for you. You know, people will always let you down, but Jesus never will. And his faithfulness is always forever. The Bible says in the book of Timothy that even when we are not faithful, he remains faithful. He will never be. He will never let us down. Let's bless his holy name and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I celebrate you and I return the praise to you. I return the glory to you. I return the honor to you because you are good. You have been so good to me. You have been so good and I bless you, oh God. Thank you, mighty God, in the name name of Jesus. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Uh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You got the breath of God in you. You want to bless his holy name in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, uh, I come to thank you today. I come to bless you today. You alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve the glory in the name of Jesus. Uh, let's give him the praise. Let's give him the glory in the name of Jesus. Our God is good. Uh, I will bless thee Oh Lord, I will bless you, oh Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless you, oh Lord. You want to say, Lord, I bless you for the gift of life. I bless you because you alone, you alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. I will bless you, oh God. I will bless you, oh God, for everything you have done for me, Lord. I do not take it for granted. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give him the praise, give him the glory, because he is faithful, he is faithful, he is faithful. Say, Lord, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless his holy name and return the glory to him. Bless his holy name, return the praise to him in the name of Jesus. Our God is good in the name of Jesus. And you go and bless the Lord with me as we go in the book of Psalms to praise his holy name. As we go in the book of Psalm, 
as we welcome the prayer in the book of Psalm, the prayer of praise and bless the name of the Lord. Welcome everybody, Susan Van Betusien. Okay, pardon me, I can't pronounce the last name, but I can pronounce Susan. Welcome, God bless you, Susan. Make a comment for me, Deborah Cole and Susan, and, and let me know where you're watching from on this broadcast today of the Holy Spirit Fire Hour, as we bless the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we go in the book of Psalm 131, Psalm 131, to bless the name of the Lord. Welcome, my brother, Zach. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Psalm 131, it says, Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Instead, I have come and quieted myself like a weaned child who no longer cries for his mother's milk. Yes, like a winged child is my soul within me. O Israel, put up in the Lord now and always. Put up in the Lord now and always. And I bring a message of hope to you today that don't put your hope in nothing else but in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord in the name of Jesus. Prem Raj, God bless you, brother. In the name of Jesus, you have a nice weekend also. God bless you. Let me know where you're watching from on this broadcast of the Holy Spirit Fire Hour as we bless the name of the Lord. Psalm 100. And 31, he said, Lord, my heart is not proud. You know, pride is something that we need to watch out for every now and then and check in our life and say, Lord, my heart is not proud. You don't want to be prideful before God. There is nothing God has given you that you make you proud in the name of Jesus. He said, my heart is not proud and my eyes are not haughty. What is that? It means that there is nothing that God has offered you that should take the place of God. There is nothing that God has given you that should now replace the worship of God in your life. Be it material, be it position, be it money, be it wealth, be it anything. There is nothing God has offered that should replace the place of God in your life. And that is one of the things. He said, my heart is humbled before you. You go and pray, Lord, and say, Father, whatever it is that I'm going to have that will make me become prideful that will make me to 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 not please you anymore. That would not make me humble myself before you. Lord, may I not have it. Uh, whatever it is that would take me away from you. Whatever it is that would take me straight to hell. Uh, Lord, uh, take it away in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, my heart is not proud. My heart is not proud. Say, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, help me to walk humbly before you. Lord, help me to please you every way. Lord, help me to please you every time. Uh, Lord, the the more you bless me, the more help me to be humble before you. The more you bless me, help me to be grateful to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, welcome everybody. Wendlin, Oluatosim, Momo. God bless you, Brandy Thomas. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Welcome on the broadcast today of the Holy Spirit. Fire Hour, Nina Taylor. God bless you in the name of Jesus and welcome everybody. We just read a opening pray and praise of prayer from Psalm 131 and I bring a word of the Lord for you today. If you stick around on the broadcast, I know you will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, Lord, my heart is not proud. Uh, you see, the Bible says, God give grace to the humble. He give grace to the humble, but to those who are prideful, he said, he look off unto them from afar off. Uh, say, Lord, uh, help me to get close to you. Help me to be humble. Help me to be humble. Help me to be humble. He said, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, uh, and he shall lift you up. Uh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, uh, and he shall lift you up. Uh, say, Lord, uh, help me, O God, in this season uh, to honor you with humility. Help me, O God, that I 
I will not miss out of the portions of the blessing that you have for me in the name of Jesus. Uh, help me, Lord, that I will be humble. Help me, Lord, that I will serve you with all that I have, with all that you have given me, with everything, Lord, uh, that nothing will be too much for me to offer before you in the name of Jesus. You wonder why the reasons why you pray so many times and pray for the same things and you haven't gotten an answer. I want to tell you today, if you will check one of the tests that God wants to look on before he bless you is if you will still remain humble, if you will still serve him, if you will still be committed to him, if you will stay faithful to the covenant. And that is why so many times we're praying and so many times we don't get an answer, not because God is not able to answer, but God is watching in your heart. God is watching if you're going to remain faithful to him. God is watching if you will hold on to him and serve him in spite of all the blessings or whatever it is that he gives you in the name of Jesus. There are people that God has blessed and given a position and because of the position they say, well, I ain't got no time for church anymore. I, I don't have time for prayer anymore. I, I don't, I'm just so busy. I'm flying from one business meeting to another. So, uh, you know, I think church is just going to stay behind or church is just going to be out of the picture. But these are the same people when they are believing God for a business uh, and believing God for contact I'm believing God. They be praying uh, uh, before the church door open. They are already there waiting, uh, uh, and they they, they, they will always call on the prophet all the time. I'm calling for prayers, uh, but once the miracle comes and once the answers come, uh, they they are half off. They go away to Jamaica for for vacation and forget about God. I'm not saying you shouldn't have time for vacation, but when God bless you, it's a time to be more um before him. It's a time to submit to him and say, Lord, it's all over to you. It came from you. The Bible says, all good and all perfect gifts come from the Lord. All good and all perfect gifts come from the Lord. He said, instead, I am calm and quieted myself. Be calm and be quieted in yourself. There are so many conversations. There are so many arguments. There are so many noise that sometimes goes on in the inner man and that is why you can't hear God clearly that is where you cannot see what God wants you to see because you are busy debating and busy arguing and busy thinking and wandering all around the place uh, with so much noise within is that I have calmed myself uh, and I have quieted myself uh, he said surely I have behaved I have behaved what kind of a behavior it is you got You'd be amazed some Christians, even in church, some who are even volunteers who are working in some department in some service in church, but their behavior does not glorify God. Their behavior does not speak well of a believer. That should be the kind of behavior a Christian should have. A humble behavior, a sweet spirit. The Bible says in the book of Acts that the Christians, the early disciples, the early believers, they were called Christians in Antioch simply because the people took notice of how they was living. And he said, these ones, they, they, they acting like a little, little Christ. They were acting like Jesus Christ. And that is where the Bible says the Christian were first called they were first called Christians in Antioch because of the way they behave, because of the way they lived, because of their conversation because of their attitude because of the way that they carry themselves in humility and in the likeness of the glory and the goodness of God in the name of Jesus welcome everybody still coming on uh, Susan Joseph Dillion, welcome and Sandra Williams and Ron Hanman my minds welcome in the name of jesus sir. all right the holy spirit fire hour today we're praying that lord I humble myself before you, I bow before you, and I worship you, Lord, with everything that I have, with everything you've given me in the name of Jesus. Hey, hello, Gloria, good in, good in, welcome in the name of Jesus, welcome. She's back from vacation. Welcome, Gloria, good in, good to see you again. All right, Bessie Moreira from uh, 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 Brazil. All right, welcome, Bessie. Welcome in the name of Jesus. I cannot speak Portuguese, but uh, hola, you know, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We're in Psalm 131, and the Bible says, Lord, 
I have humbled myself before you. My soul humble before you. And let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth. What is your hope in? What is it, is it that you have your hope in? You're going to say, Lord, my hope is in you. My strength is in you. In you and in you and in you alone. Uh, uh, let your hope be in the Lord. He said, let Israel put his hope in the Lord now and forever. Now and forever. That is to say, there is nothing else you want to put your hope in. Uh, every other place you may want to put your hope in is sinking sand. Uh, but on Christ, the solid rock alone. Uh, on Christ, the solid rock alone you need to stand on christ the solid rock alone will sustain you when trouble comes nothing else will stand but when you put your hope in him when you put your faith in him you will be sustained in the name of jesus christ say lord i put my hope in you in the name of jesus i put my trust in you in the name of jesus in this season that no matter what it is that is going on around me my trust is in you. My hope is in you in the name of Jesus Christ as we give him the glory, as we give him the praise uh, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, uh, I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, because you are faithful. I thank you, Lord, because you are the one that has sustained me. Uh, and I know that there is nothing uh, that I request of you that you cannot offer me. So, therefore, I come before you now and I ask, Lord, uh, that whatever is the barrier whatever it is that has hindered me what is the hindrance that is hindering me from receiving from you lord remove the obstacles remove the hindrances remove the barriers of my way in the name of jesus uh, i tell you when we come to the lord we need to be open before him uh, we need to be open before him and say lord whatever it is uh, that will hinder me that will hinder you to walk in me lord take it away in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord wants to do a work in you, but then he needs you to be submissive to him. Uh, he needs you to be surrendered to him uh, because he, 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 all he wants is a willing vessel. Uh, it's not asking that you be qualified. It's not asking that you be perfect. It's not asking that uh, you, you, but it's just asking that you come just as you are, surrendered to him uh, and ready to say, Lord, uh, I am humbly submitted Submitted to you that you might do your walk in me. I am humbly submitted to you that you might walk in me and do amazing things in my life uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I just read for those who are just joining the broadcast, welcome all the same uh, in the name of Jesus. We, we read from Psalm 131, just the three verses. Uh, Psalm 131, uh, and he said, my eyes is on you. My heart is not prideful. So we're praying that prayer and say, Lord, uh, my eyes is upon you, O God. Uh, my eyes is upon you, O Lord. Uh, my heart is upon you, O God. Uh, and my heart is humbled before you. Uh, for you are faithful, for you are good, and you are going to do great things, O Lord. Uh, you are going to do amazing things for me in this season. Uh, you are going to do mighty things for me now in the name of Jesus. You're going to bless the Lord in the name of Jesus uh, and say whatever, whatever it is uh, that you want to do, oh God, uh, don't do it without me. Whatever walk you want to walk in this season, uh, whatever walk and assignment you got for me to do where you place me, Lord, uh, don't do it without me, oh God. Uh, I'm a willing vessel and I'm available to you, oh Lord, for your use, oh God. Uh, if you would use the donkey, the little donkey that was tied, the con that was tied uh, for the triumphant entry, oh God. Uh, I'm available, oh Lord, uh, that you will ride on me, that you will use me to your glory, that you will lose me and use me. And he told them, he said, go and give them the description. He said, when you make a turn, when you get to the place, you're going to find the cult that has been tied. Uh, and he said, lose it. Uh, and, and anybody asks you why you're losing it, why you're taking it away, uh, you're going to tell them, the Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of it. I tell you, the Lord has need of your life. The only reason why you are still breathing, the only reason why you are still alive, the only reason why we can still be standing strong. We are not on oxygen. We are not on a coma. We are not in the hospital. We are just standing to the glory of God. The only reason is because the Lord, the Lord has need 
of our life. And so you're going to bless his name and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to bless you. I come to thank you. But you are going to use me. He said, any man told you, why are you losing it? The Lord has need of it. And straight away, he said, there will be no more argument. It's going to let you go free. You're going to say, Lord, in this season, everything that you have prepared for me, everything that you have planned for me, everything that you have proposed for me, in the name of Jesus, I, I, I will not lose my portion. In the name of Jesus, I will not lose the blessings that you have for me. I, I, he said in Revelation, he said, take hold and lay hold on your crown, lest another man come to take your crown away. He said, hold fast to that which you have, uh, lest another man come to take your crown away. You want to say, Lord, uh, that I will not lose that which you have given me, that I will not lose my crown, uh, that I will not lose my blessings, uh, that I will not lose my health, uh, that I will not lose my, my, my position, uh, that I will not lose uh, the office that you have given me. Lord, I'm holding fast unto you. My hope is in you. My trust is in you, O oh God. Uh, and I will not lose that which you have given me in the name of Jesus. Uh, he was talking about Judas Iscariot. He said, let another take his office. Uh, you're going to say, Lord, uh, I will not be replaced in the office that you have given me. But I will excel by the power of your grace. Uh, I will not be removed uh, in that office you have given me. But I will excel in the name of Jesus. And he said, let another take his place and then the, the disciples followed that prophecy and the Bible said they cast the lot and they replaced Judas Iscariot. You know it is humbling to say there is no one that God cannot replace. There is no one that God cannot remove. But one thing that he wants from us is our humility. One thing that he wants from us is our devotion, our integrity, our discipline, and our dedication to him. He is faithful to us. He is faithful to us. Bible says there is no shadow of changing. He doesn't fail. He is not a man that he should lie. But God has so many people walking in his vineyard who are not faithful to the calling, who are not faithful to the and not loyal to his word. But you want to say, Lord, I don't want to be like the traitor. I don't want to be like Judas Iscariot. I want to be faithful. I want to remain loyal. I want to remain devoted to you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, uh, Saul, the first king, was not thinking or was not planning to become a king, but God chose him anyway. And now that you be the fear of God, that you instill the fear of God in him for him to become obedient, for him to become uh, uh, disciplined and to follow the integrity and follow the word of God. But he did not. Uh, and, and he was looking for the praise of men. Uh, he was looking for the praise of the people. Uh, we have a lot of people in ministry today who all they want is the crowd. Uh, they are not looking for the life to be blessed. Uh, they are not looking for the people to be devoted to God and to make it to heaven. Uh, they, they are not interested in the person. They are interested in the crowd of the people and the, and the gathering and the, and the praise of men. Uh, uh, and that is not the calling to ministry. That is not the heart of a shepherd. That is not the heart of a preacher, the minister. Uh, but we are called to raise the people with a heart that will be devoted unto God. Uh, we are called to raise the people who will be taken up to heaven, uh, not the people. We are not called to pastor people and lead them to hellfire and teach them the wrong thing. No, 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 no. You're going to say, Lord, I don't want to compromise in my assignment. Help me and strengthen me. I need your wisdom. I need your grace in the name of Jesus that I will not be replaced, uh, that I will be faithful in that calling, that I will be faithful in the assignment that you have called me in the place where you have given me in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I tell you, you can't do it by yourself. Uh, you need the help of God. Uh, you need the empowerment of the Spirit of God. Uh, you need the grace of God. Uh, for it is the grace of God that will help you. It is the grace of God that is going to enable you to be able to run the race successfully. Now, now, now look at that word, grace. Uh, and uh, remove the letter G and all you have is race. Uh, now, 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 if you're going to run the race that God has for you, you need the grace grace of God. Uh, and if you're going to be great in life, uh, you need the grace of God. Uh, and Paul began to say, I am what I am. Uh, it don't matter what anybody say I can think and what they do. 
uh, he said i am what i am uh, not because of my knowledge uh, not because of my smartness paul began to say and testify he said i am what i am by the grace of god by the grace of god uh, the grace of god is sufficient for you you're gonna say lord uh, i need your grace in this season to run the race that is set before me <laughs> i need your grace oh god to make a great impact in the assignment that you have given me <laughs> You are not in competition with nobody. You are not in comparison with nobody. Paul began to say that those who compare themselves one to another are not wise. But you are wise enough to understand that you are not, uh, you are not running the race with somebody and, and trying to compete. and try. Jesus Christ is the one that you are looking up onto for the finish line. And you are taking the instruction from him. If you, if you, lift, if you shift your focus from him, then you'll be digressing. You'll be distracting distracted you will not be able to go on in the track that he has called you to but you're going to say lord i need your strength i need your grace that i will be able to make it oh lord in this season in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus he said about judas he said let another take his place he missed the race he failed in his race even though he had the best pastor that ever was he had jesus christ god in person god a son of man rabbi he had him for three and a half years and still failed failed the bible says and the devil entered into him uh, say lord uh, uh, my heart is before you today uh, and take 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 your x-ray take your x-ray through my heart uh, and whatever that need not to be in it lord remove uh, in the name of jesus i don't want the devil enter into my heart in the name of jesus uh, lord i want my heart to be consecrated before you i want my heart to be pure before you i want my heart to be devoted all to you all to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. It said, Keep your heart with all diligence, because out of it, out of your heart, comes the issues of life. Uh, the issues of life. That is, your heart is the center of it all. Your heart is the center of it all. And he wants your heart in Revelation 3.20. He said, now, I stand at the door and I knock. And anyone who hears my voice, he said, when he opened the door, he said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit with him. In the same church, he was telling them, he said, you are neither hot nor cold. You don't want your heart to be hot nor cold you don't want your heart to be low before god today you are hot tomorrow you are cold uh, you don't, you have room for god now the next you are begin thinking of another thing that shouldn't be uh, you want to say lord i want my heart to be on fire for you i want my heart to be purified for you i want my heart to be hot for you not lukewarm not cold in this season in this time uh, there are so many things going on. Revelation, Revelation, Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And he said, I stand at the door. Now, 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 you want to keep your heart. And that was supposed to be Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 in the name of Jesus. Uh, now, 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 Genesis chapter 22. Is the key text I want to use today as we go in a hour of teaching and praying on the Holy Spirit fire hour. Genesis chapter 22, and that is the story of Abraham. Abraham had waited for the Lord to give him a son for many, many, many years. Maybe you are in a place you've been waiting for God. You are in the place you have been waiting for God, and then worries is coming in. But you don't have to worry because God is faithful to his promises. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 22. And that is the text that God brought before Abraham. And I believe somebody is going to be blessed today. Maybe you are in a test today. Maybe you are in a season of your testing, in the season of your trial. But I want you to know that God is faithful and he will help you through in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1. He said, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah. 
and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God has told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and two of them went together. You know the story? But Isaac spoke, verse 7, Genesis 22, verse 7. He said, but Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, Father, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? That was a smart boy. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound his Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son your only son from me. Hallelujah. All right, now I'm going to stop from there, but we, we can read on to verse 19. But this is a story that we are all familiar with. God was not looking for to kill Isaac. God is not in the business of giving you a blessing and taking it away. God was not looking for to kill Isaac. God wanted to know the heart of Abraham. God wanted to know if he has placed the son above him that gave him the son. He said, your son Isaac, whom you love. Remember from this time, from the before this time that he got the son, the Bible says that he had gotten Ishmael. And Ishmael was not the promised child. Ishmael was the son that he had through Agar, and the Lord had to say, let him go. If you're going to walk in obedience with God, the Ishmael must go. If you're going to walk in obedience with God, the Isaac must not be placed above God. There is no blessing God has given you that should take the place of God. The reason why we lose some things and we begin to cry and begin to wonder and say, Lord, but you gave me this, and Lord, but you did it for me, but Lord, and why, and this, is because uh, uh, sometimes uh, God has seen that we have now so much embraced the gift. We have now so much embraced the blessing more than the giver of the blessing. We now begin to worship the blessing. We now begin making the blessing an idol before God. And if you're going to walk with God, it's not about the things that God does for you. It's about God himself. I tell you, you can lose everything and anything. But when you still have God, you have not lost anything at all. So you're going to say, Lord, anything can go. Anything can material, anything, anyone, anything can go away. But your connection and your devotion and your covenant and your determination nation and service to God and your holding on to him is something that must never, never diminish whatsoever. It don't matter what it is. It don't matter who it is that will leave you. Are you ready to lay on the altar 
on the altar of your sacrifice before God in obedience. Bible says that when God told him, take your son and go, you never see from where we read where there was a dialogue or a debate or a discussion with Sarah, the mother of the baby. Nothing. So there are certain things when God tells you to do, it's not subject to anybody's opinion. It's not subject to anybody's uh, 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 trying to. Now, now, I have a problem with when God speaks to you and you think you're going about going for a confirmation. You're going about to seek a second opinion. When God spoke to Abraham, straight away, he organized the trip, told the uh, the servant, let's go. We're going to worship. And when he, when he saw from afar, you need to be able to have vision to see from afar where God is taking you now. All that you have now is not all that God has planned for you. All that you have now, there is much more. You, the little Isaac you have now, there is much more covenant and blessings and increase that God wants to give you greater than what you can see now. But if you will not obey him, if you will not be able to organize your sacrifice before him, if you will not be able to lay the altar, he said he laid the altar, he carried the fire. You must always have the fire. Everywhere you see the fire in scripture, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you must never lose the voice of God. The Holy Spirit, you must never lose the presence of God. The Holy Spirit, the fire of God, never go cold, never grow tired, never go wet and, and dumb and lukewarm. You must always be on fire for God in the name of Jesus Christ. So he said, the Lord said, hold it, don't kill the boy. But remember, there was a very important conversation between the boy and his daddy. Isaac was close to understanding the things of God, and he knew that when there is a fire, and there is a wood, and there is an altar, and a sacrifice to be made, there must be a ram, there must be a lamb, there must be an animal that needs to be sacrificed. So he said, Father, where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? He said, here is the wood, here is the fire. Where is the sacrifice? Now, the answer of faith is that God will provide for himself. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide for himself. Now, if this is a very important thing you need to know. When you are serving God, your provision is not based on your paycheck. Your provision is not based on your business. Your provision is not based on what your income is. Your blessing is based on God, Jehovah Jireh. He's the one that will meet your needs. He's the one that will open doors for you. He's the one that makes you to be able to have that provision. He's the one that makes it easy for you to be able to do that job. And you could have been fired. You could have been on, on, on some kind of health situation that you can't walk no more. Huh? But God is the one that gives you the strength. So your blessing is not coming through your walk. Huh? Your blessing is not coming through your paycheck. Huh? It is coming through Jehovah Jireh. He's the one that does not let you to have lost your mind. He's Jehovah Jireh that does not make you to have been locked up in some kind of a, a, a hospital or some kind of mental uh, situation or asylum or whatever it's called. It it is the blessings of God. It is the provision of God. And you've got to quit putting your hope in the things that you see. But put your hope in God. Look up unto God. Psalm 121. 131. And then you go to 121. He said, my eyes, my help come from you. My help come from the hill. He said, my heart is not haughty before you. My heart is humble, 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 humble before you. We need to come to that point. As a child of God, that we are not uh, putting any of that thing before God, but God must be the first. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He began to say, Seek ye first the kingdom 
of God and his righteousness and every other thing. He said, all other things shall be added unto you. Now, the problem is we are seeking every other thing first. The problem is we are putting God's kingdom last. We are putting God last. We are looking elsewhere, looking everything. But God is the one that we must put first before us. You cannot serve God and put another thing before God. He said, you can serve God and mammon together. You've got to serve God and put him first in everything at all times. So Abraham at this time has learned his lessons because the Ishmael that he made out of the way of covenant in the part of the flesh, God said, let him go. You've got to let go of thinking in your own way and making things happen your own way. You've got to let it go and surrender to God. You cannot have an Ishmael to replace the Isaac that God has given and the provision and the blessing and the covenant of God. No. it got to be God first. You're going to say, Lord, take away any Ishmael that is on the way, that is hindering me from doing that which you have called me to do, so that I will be able to to fulfill the sacrifice before you with my Isaac. It wasn't the boy that God was want. God didn't want to kill Isaac. But it was the heart of his father. It was the heart of Abraham that God was wanting to seal the covenant with. And the Bible says when he had obeyed because he has spoken it. What did he speak? He said, God will provide for himself. God will provide for himself. God will provide for himself. What are you speaking concerning your situation? Are you speaking that God is the one that is in control? Are you speaking that God is the one that will make the provision? Are you speaking that God is the one that will give you the position? Are you speaking that God is the one that will make it happen for you? What is it that you are saying? The, the boy asked the question. And life questions are going to come. You're going to be in questionable situations, questionable circumstances. Questions are going to answer, are going to come for that require answers. But God is the answer. I love that song. That Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer for the world today. There is no question in God that there is no question you have that God cannot answer. There is no trouble you have that God cannot make a, make a solution for you. The boy began to ask the question. He said, where is the sacrifice? Where is the lamb? Where is the animal? And he said, God will provide. When you have situations challenging you, when you have your sons and daughters and children and grandchildren on opioid and addiction and there is questions and, uh, and that was not the plan of God. That was not the promise of God. And you have questions. Uh, I want you to know the answer is in God. The answer is not in rehabilitation. The answer is not in uh, nagging. The answer is in the word. The answer is in Jesus. The answer is in the place of sacrifice. The answer is in the place of the altar of prayer. The Bible says, and he made the altar. The altars in the Bible is the place of you having an encounter with God. Altar at the place of sacrifice. Altar is the place where you pray. Altar is the place where you surrender before God and you lay it before God and bring it before God in the heart of prayer. It's so sad we don't have churches that have the heart of open up for prayer anymore. The heart of back in the days used to be a place where people come to lay on the altar, come to groan on the altar, come to roar before the altar, come to lay before the altar and pray before God. They don't care who is next to you or who is going around you. You got to lay before the altar of God in the place of prayer. You got to lay before the altar. You can make a halter, a closet for yourself if they won't let you use one in the church. That you can open one in your house. In the place of the halter. There is a power in the halter. There is a release on the halter. The Bible says about Elisha. Elisha. Elijah. Elijah now. The first, the first one. Elijah. Not Elisha. And he was going to challenge the 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 bar 400 prophets of Baal of Jezebel, all of them, and he said, "Come, if God is God, let him be God." Let's look at that. First uh, Kings chapter eighteen. 
He said, if God is this God, serve him. How long are you going to be between two opinions? Between two opinions. When you come before the altar of God, there is no two opinions. Abraham did not have another backup. He knows that Agar and Ishmael is gone. That's his second opinion. Gone. He had only one. Only one Isaac left. And now, he got to serve God. First King chapter 18. Chapter 18. Chapter 18. First King chapter 18. And the Bible says, uh, He called them. He said, How long shall you come between two opinions? How long? He said, Let them give us a bullock. Let them give us a bullock. First King chapter 18, verse 21. First Kings chapter 18 verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Now, you've got to understand at this point, the people have turned away from God. And they couldn't answer him a word. But they had to go on with the, with the, with the contest. Now God is going to put you into the position of test at some time. Where your faith is going to be tested. But then what kind of word are you going to speak in that test? What kind of word are you going to declare in that trial? In that position? In that fight? In that test? Bible says, and Elijah began to bring all the prophets of Baal to test. They couldn't have signed a word. But they went on with the contest anyway, because it was going to prove that, uh, well, their, their Baal was alive. Now, the altar, the Bible says, and Elisha prepared the altar. You've got to read the whole story. You know the story of 1 Kings chapter 18. And he said, let the God that answer by fire, let him be God. If you will prepare the altar prayer, if you will prepare the wood, if you will prepare in obedience the sacrifice, the God will send the fire. God wants to revive his church again. God wants his church not to be lukewarm. God wants the ministry to be on fire, the church to be on fire, make an impact in our society, make an impact in our community, make an impact in our world, and overcome every territory and every forces of darkness that is going on and around in the territory, in all the principalities and powers. But we need the halt our prayer. We need to prepare in prayer. We need to walk in obedience for the Lord. We need to guard our heart with all diligence uh, and, and take away all this petty, petty, petty competition and petty, petty pulling down one another and trying to compete with one another and trying to bring one, one down and gossip about backstabbing and all that. The fire is not going to fall on the altar of God like that. He said, the God that answers by fire let him be God. And the God that answered by fire has his conditions. That if you're going to, the Bible says for three days, Abraham had to walk. Abraham made the journey for three days. Three. The number of Trinity. Sarah was not in the picture. She didn't know where they took his boy. She didn't know that they were taking him up to the mountain. The Bible says in the book of <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, it said, by faith, Abraham knew that even if he killed the boy, by faith, he believed that God is able to raise him up. That is the first concept of uh, resurrection. When you walk with God, uh, you will see the impossibility become possible. For God, the Bible says, with him, the things that are impossible with man. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. There is no impossibility with God whatsoever. When we lay it before God, uh, when we devoted before God, when our heart is committed before him, we we'll begin to see him do amazing things and wonderful things. Quit trying to work it out in your own way. Quit trying to work it out in your own knowledge. Uh, but wait upon him uh, and walk with him. And the Bible says that 
it got to a point and he told the servant, you wait here. You got to understand that when you're going to walk with God, not everybody is going to go with you where God is going to take you. He saw the mountain afar off. The people that start the journey with you, uh, sometimes they're not going to go up to the mountain with you. The people that started together with you, they cannot see farther than the beginning, but God has called you and the vision is given to you. You are committed to it and you are supposed to be disciplined to it that even when they will not be able to follow you up to the hop to the top of the mountain, even if they will not be able to go up to the place of the encounter on the top of the mountain uh, with you, you got to be able to go with God. Because God has given you the vision. And he saw afar off. And he told them, you wait here. Hi and the lad were going to worship. Worship, worship, worship. You cannot worship God and worship man at the same time. Just because they're the one that support the ministry and they have all the money. And then you cannot give them the word of correction. You cannot worship God and mammon at the same time. You got to be a, a preacher and a minister to the point that you know that nobody can buy you. The Bible says that don't give gifts. Uh, uh, gifts can blind the, the, the judge and make him give the wrong judgment. No. Don't be, don't be carried away by the finances of nobody. Don't be carried away by the, min, the, 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 the means and the funds and the support that you get from people. That you lose your focus. That you lose your calling and you lose God and your dedication and your devotion to him. Because at the end of it all, you are not going to stand before people to give their account. You're not going to stand before people to render account. On the last day, you're going to stand before God. And he said uh, that everyone will so give an account of himself to God. Uh, uh, that, 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 that is Romans. Romans chapter 13 verse 14, I think. Let me check it out. Romans. He said, so every one of us are going to give an account uh, before God in worship. All the worship. So you don't worship people. You worship God. 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 All right. That will be Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 14, I think. Let me look for it. Okay, I'm looking. Romans chapter. Uh, he said, every one of us are going to give an account before God. So it's not about people. It's, not, it's about you and your worship and your devotion to God. All right. Okay, let me just read this one. Uh, Romans fourteen twelve. It said Romans fourteen twelve and thirteen and fourteen. All right. It says so. Then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Romans thirteen. Uh, no, fourteen twelve. Please. Romans fourteen twelve. And he said, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. He said, I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that is esteemed anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother grieved you, and said, thy meat, and then walketh not in charitably, destroy him not, and all that. He said, let not then your good be evil spoken of. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14 from verse 12. Now we've got to understand that there are people who cannot go up to worship with you. You've got to understand that it's not everything that you don't, you, 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 you don't compete with people and try to let people stand in the way and judge people and judgment and bring down people and all that. It is by the grace of God. It is by the mercy of God. It is by the goodness of God that he has called us. And you must stand not between two opinions, but you must stand in the place of service to God and devotion to God all the way. The let how long shall you continue to be between two opinions? If Yahweh be Yahweh, let him be. You gonna serve him, you're gonna worship him. But if if Baal be Baal, you're gonna go after him. Now, when you get back in that first king chapter 18, the Bible says, after he has 
He has the, the Lord that answered by fire. The God of Elijah sent down the fire and fire came upon the halter and consumed it because the prophet of God, there is no fire that came upon the halter and began to cut themselves and all that. We need that demonstration of the fire of God again in our lives. We need that demonstration of the fire of God again in our ministries. We need that first love to be restored. He said, them, they told them in the Revelation church, he said, listen, I, I have this against you that you are forsaken your first love. You are forsaking your first love. You are not seeking me like you used to be. You are not worshipping me like you used to be. You are not devoted to me like you used to be. You, you, you have let other things uh, taken over. You have let other things... Uh, now, now you are falling in love with the blessing that I've given you. You are falling in love with all the things that comes with the, with, with the goodness of, the, of, 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 my, of my devotion or my service to you of my faithfulness to you. He said, you are forsaken your first love. Your first love. He said, you've got to return to your first love. Return to your first love. And, and, and you, when you return to your first love, you are not in between two opinions. There is no debate about it. There is no argument about it. You are committed to your service to God. And God comes first. Not the opinions of men. You know something about the opinion of men? Everybody is entitled to their opinion. Everybody can run their mouth and say whatever they want to say. But when it's come to God, <laughs> and when it's come to God, Abraham did not consult with the mother, the mother of the baby boy, Isaac. Sarah, I need your opinion. God said I should go up to the mountain and make a sacrifice. No. God has the final say. And the word of God is not subject to the opinion of another. The word of God is not subject to the debate by the committee. The word of God is not subject to... No, no, no. That is where the church system in, in America has gotten a fault. The committee does not rule over a pastor. That is not the acts of the disciples. That is not the hacks of the apostles. That is not the New Testament church. The church is not the company that the board of directors rule over. The church is a spiritual entity. The church is the spiritual organization of the body of Christ. The church is an organism of the body of Christ. The church is greater than any kind of organization anywhere in the world. The church is the body of Christ Jesus. It don't matter about the denominations and the doctrines. Jesus is the head of the church. Not the pastor. Not the bishop. And you as the minister is an ambassador, is a delegate, is a messenger that is being given an assignment over that. And the Bible says, you see that Revel uh, Romans? It said we will give an account. We will give an account. We will give an account. Now, 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 all the committee that when God show you and speak you to something, they are holding you back. They, they don't belong there. The committee, the committee are not in control of the church of God. The voice of God, the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the church. The Holy Spirit should be the one leading and the voice of God is not subject to any committee meeting and vote. And democracy, no. When God speaks, the people should have such a heart of worship, uh, such a heart that is reverence, such a heart of obedience, such a heart of sacrifice. When you open the place of sacrifice, the place of altar, when people lay down in the apostolic church, they do not debate the voice of God. He said, and they was worshiping God, and they was and the certain prophet had come from Jerusalem, and as they worship God, as they pray to God, and, and he said, the voice of the Lord came and said, separate for me uh, uh, Paul and Simon to the work that I have called them unto and separate for me separate for me God wants you to be set apart when it's come to his service he wants you to be set apart when it's come it's set apart it's not devoted to anybody debating about it and the Bible said they was worshipping God Acts chapter 13 Acts chapter 13 verse 1 Acts chapter 13 verse 1 he said and certain prophet had come they came from Jerusalem 
they came all the way from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the head of the church. Jerusalem is the only city where we have the heavenly Jerusalem and the heavenly Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city of peace. The body of Christ needs to reference and take order from our heavenly Jerusalem. Acts chapter 13 verse 1. He said, now in the church there was at Antioch. Remember, it was the same Antioch where the Bible says the believers, the early Christians were called Christians. Why? Because of the way that they were behaving. Because of the way that they were serving God. He said, now in the church uh, uh, that was at Antioch, there was certain prophet and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Nige, and Lucius of training. A manian who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Now, this is a New Testament prophet. Your church must have an office for the prophet. Your church must be open to the voice of God. Your church must be able, yes, you are the pastor, you are the bishop, but there must be the recognition of the grace of God, of the body, of the ascension gift. He said when he arose and he, the ascension gift, he gave gift unto men, for apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and teachers, the, the fivefold, they, they are all the ascension gift that must be in operation if you are going to be a New Testament church. Not a committee that are debating that, yes, you can't do this, you can't do that. When God speaks, it's not subject. It's a matter of worship. It's a matter of heart of worship. It's a matter of worship. It's all about him. It's all about God. He said, at verse 2, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. He said, as they ministered to the Lord, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, you, you need a fasting church. You need a, 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 a committee, a leadership, a eldership that comes and fast and lay before the altar in the place of sacrifice. A, a preacher, a pastor, a bishop, apostle, prophet, whatever the office that you have, must have a team of intercessors. Intercessors who are not there to gossip but are there to pray. Bible says after that Moses was there that it took Aaron and Hor to lift up his hand and Joshua was in the battleground in the valley. And each time the hand of Moses goes down, Joshua begins to lose the battle in the valley. It takes Aaron and Hor to lift up the hands of Moses. And Moses was the greater prophet. But they had to lift up his hands. So you need a prayer intercessors. Bible says that out of the twelve Jesus had the Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Everywhere you go, in the house of Jairus, he put everybody that was speaking negative out and was laughing and, 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 and was saying stupid. He put them out. And he brought Peter, James, and John in the inner room where he was going to raise Jairus' daughter and said, Talita kumi, little girl, get up. And he handed her over to the mother and said, give, him, give, her, give her food. You need that intercessor. On the mountain of transfiguration, you need Peter, James, and John, who was there up on the mountain. People who are not, they're, they're, you, every preacher need that Peter, James, and John. People who are able to counsel you. People who are able to pray with you. People who are able to take you up on the mountain of transfiguration. People who are able to intercede for you. To intercede for you and to also give you correction. Counseling come with correction. Or when you get to a place that you can, nobody can tell you, no nothing, nobody can counsel you, nobody can give you a word, and nobody can encourage you, and nobody can, uh, you, you are heading straight away down to the part of Nebuchadnezzar, to the part of Herod. Pride goeth before a fall. Psalm 131, where we started. He said, my heart is humble before you. It takes humility for a man like Abraham. After all he has waited and after all he has gone through. And to still say, Lord, I'm humble before you and I'm submitted to you. Whatever you want. You want the boy, I'm going to give him up to you. For the Bible says in Hebrew, he said, he believed that God is able to raise him back onto life again. Now, as they ministered, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord. We're talking about worship. 
We're talking about ministering unto the Lord. Ministering unto the Lord from the heart, from the heart, from the heart, on the heart of prayer, on the heart of sacrifice. He said, as they ministered to the Lord and they fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. God has called you to a greater work. God has called you to go to the nations. God has called you to go around the county. God has called you to go around the neighborhood. God has called you to go around and do something great and reach out to one of the places that other people would not dare. Separate for me. God has called you to be set apart. God has called you to be separated for a greater elevation. Before God will great, great, give you a, a, a global, international. You got to be separated. You got to before your elevation comes a separation. Before your your promotion comes your testing, your testing, your testing. It was after Abraham was going to, he already met the boy, he tied him, he was going to cut him before the angel showed up and said, don't you cut the boy? And there was a ram. He said, now I know, now. Not that God didn't know before he was waiting on you. He was waiting to see how you're going to be. He was waiting. If you can be faithful in little, he said, who will commit to you greater? He said, if you can be faithful in another man's business, he said, who will commit to you your own business? You've got to be faithful to God. In the assignment he's giving you, you've got to be faithful to God. For what he has called you to do, you've got to be faithful to God. Everybody want to be on the television. They want to be on TBN and, uh, and God TV and uh, Inspiration and this star. But if you are not faithful to God in the little, it's not about competition. It's not about being on TV. It's about making impact in the little place God has placed you. Make an impact. Raise the people. Let them be ministering unto the Lord. Let them be worshipping God with a heart. John chapter 4. John chapter 4 verse 23 and 24. He said God is a spirit. And that was the story with the, uh, 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 the Samaritan woman who has had five husbands. Five husbands. Do you welcome people who have had five husbands in your church? Or your committee? When somebody who has had five husbands come in your church, your committee say, no, this one cannot be in the church. We don't have room for people like this in our church. When people who have been in jail and returned from uh, uh, re-entry back into the society come in, uh, and, 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 and then the committee say, no, this one, this one has been in the prison for 20 years. We cannot welcome him in this church. No. But a man after the heart of God. Jesus began to speak to that woman. The Samaritan woman. He said God is a spirit. She had a little understanding. She said well I know that we're going to worship on the mountain. We're going to worship in Jerusalem. We're going to worship there. But he said no. When the Messiah come. He said I that I'm speaking to you. I am the Messiah. I am the one. And he went on and told her. He said listen. God is a spirit neither on that mountain or neither in that place the same God that is doing great works in all around the world can do mighty things in your church can do great things in your church you just have to prepare the altar stop going about two opinions stop listening to the opinion of people who are not ready to worship who are not ready to minister unto the Lord who are not ready to lay it all before the altar people got to be all in for God you cannot be continuously be lukewarm you are hot today, you are cold tomorrow, you are not devoted, you have, you have to be begging you and have to be appealing to you on the same old same thing. When your heart is hot for the Lord, when your heart is devoted to the Lord, you will not need the uh, motivation of anybody to serve God with your money, to serve God with your time, to serve God with, your, with everything that you have. We all want the blessings of God, but are we ready to lay it all before him? Are we ready to be devoted unto him? 
He said, God is a spirit, and those who must worship him, must worship him, not in by mouth, not by high service, not by, well, if they don't give you the microphone, you cannot serve. If they don't recognize you, you cannot serve. He said, not of high service. He said, God is a spirit, and those who must worship him, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. For such does the Father seek that they must worship Him. God wants people who are going to seek God with the whole of their heart. The Bible says, And they then, having fasted and prayed, Acts chapter 13, verse 3, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. The Holy Spirit gave an instruction. It was not subject to the committee. And then they fasted, including all the elders and all the people that came from Jerusalem and the prophet. And they fasted, and they prayed, and they laid hand upon them, and blessed them, and prayed for them, and sent them on the assignment that God has called them to. We need a people, a people, who will be devoted? Who will be devoted? Who will be committed to God with such a heart before Him, with such a devotion before Him, which is not subject to people's, uh, 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 you know, uh, debate? So the Bible says, uh, all the Genesis chapter twenty-two. Bible says, and he made that altar. And the Lord now said, Genesis 22. I'm going to read to the end now. He said, when, verse 9, when they have arrived, when they have arrived, and they came to the place that God has told them of, I decree and I declare to you, if you will stick onto the journey that God has called you onto, you will arrive. You will arrive. If you will stick onto the journey, if you will continue after God, you will arrive. You will arrive. But many times you think you have arrived. No. You never get to a point in God that you have reached your maximum. God will always make a room for you. No matter where you think you have arrived now, God wants to take you higher. God wants to take you longer. God wants to take you deeper. God wants to take you to another dimension, greater. There's always a place called bigger than where God has put you now. But if you're going to arrive there, you've got to keep on following him. In that John chapter 4, and Jesus began to tell the woman, he said, listen, the water that I'm going to give you is going to be such that you wouldn't need to come here. It will be a spring of water from within you that will be flowing, that will be flowing, that will be flowing. That is where God wants to take you. Now, Genesis 22, he said, and Abraham lifted up his eye. That is, after in verse 12 and 11, right? And Abraham, well, verse 9, of the 9, 10, and all that, you know. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place the Overjari, as it is said to this day. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. <laughs> and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time. And said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemies. 
Your seed will possess the gate of this enemy, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the heart be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Thou hast obeyed my voice. He said, so Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, he had also born children unto their brother Nahor. And halls and all that and all that family genealogy and all that. But he said, You will possess the gates of your enemy. You want to obey the voice of God. When you obey the voice of God, you will possess the gates of your enemy. When you obey the voice of God, the enemy cannot overcome you. When you obey the voice of God, the gate of your destiny is secured. God will lift you higher beyond your expectation, and the enemy cannot. He said, Your seed. That is, it doesn't stop with you. It's a generational blessing. And the angel came a second time. The angel came a second time. You say, Lord, I want to have an encounter with you. To be set apart in the place of sacrifice, in the place of obedience, in the place of service, in the place of worship. As they ministered unto the Lord, they were devoted unto God. They were obedient to the voice of God. And the prophet came from Jerusalem and they were worshiping the Lord. They were praying. They were ministering to the Lord. The Lord spoke. The Holy Spirit said, separate for me set apart for the work I've called them and as they did that uh, they fasted they prayed and they blessed them and they commissioned them to go now this is very important if you have a ministry where people are fighting and people are trying to pull away and to go away you don't have to struggle with them if you discuss with them and reason with them and they are still going to go away you 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 rather come to the place with God he said the angel of God came the second time now, there are people that will, no matter how you appeal to them and all that, they're still going to leave you. They're still going to go. They're going to go. They're going to go. Well, let them go. For the most important thing is you don't let God leave you. You don't leave God. He said the angel came a second time. And that was when the angel, after the ram was provided, that was when the angel came a second time. He now made the sacrifice. And then there appeared before the a second time. Then there was a ceiling. He said, you will possess the gate of your enemies. There are people who will leave you. But as they leave, the angel of God will appear the second time. And God will bring many more people. And God will bring a replacement for you. And God will lead you in the path. He said, the gate you will overcome the gate of your enemy. You will possess your children, your children. Your walk in obedience, continuation. It doesn't stop there. And it will continue. And You just obey the voice of God. You obey the voice of God. And the woman, John chapter 4, he said, she obeyed the voice of Jesus, went into the city of Samaria, went and told all the men. He said, come see a man who told me everything that I've ever done. A man who told me everything, everything I have ever done. And he brought everyone and there was a great revival. That was the same woman who had five husbands with the sixth one. So it don't matter where you have been and what you have been. It don't matter who you have been and where. When, when, when you come in the hall tower when you come in, the, come in the place with encounter with God, when you come in the place where God wants to do amazing things, uh, and the angel of God, and the place where the Holy Spirit speak as they was ministering to God, there is a great revival, there is a great change, there is a great thing that will happen. But you got to understand Romans chapter 14, Romans 14, it's, it's, it's about everybody. He said, don't be all this gossip and all this backstabbing and all this argument and all that. Where the people ministered unto the Lord, they also had their own challenges. Now I'm going going, going back to that, uh, going back to that scripture, Acts chapter chapter thirteen. You're going to read further, and you're going to see what it talks about there. It talks about Acts chapter fourteen. I mean Acts chapter thirteen. Sorry, from verse four. Acts chapter thirteen, from verse four. Acts chapter 13, Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, from verse 4 now. It says, so, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there, they sailed to Cyprus. 
they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now, when they had gone through the island to Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm going, verse 6. A certain sorcerer. A false prophet. A Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Who was the proconsul? Who was with the proconsul? Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. <laughs> All right. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, the apostle, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O fool of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now, instead, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Acts chapter 13 from verse 4 to 12. Acts chapter 13 from verse 4 to 12. Now, if you're going to walk with God in obedience and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, you've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to face the false prophet. You're going to face the sorcerers. You are going to be able to have the sermon to identify them warlock and witches and wizard. They don't have a place where the move of the Holy Spirit is. Those who try to withstood and those who try to stand in the way and those who, he said, the gate of the enemies. You will, you will prevail over the gate of your enemy. Now, do, now, you've got to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit of God because there are, there are elements there are forces of the evil ones that will try to withstood the calling that God has for you. That will try to hinder the assignment that God has for you. They will try to hinder the purpose of God for you. They will try to stop. They said the pro council. He was an intelligent man. But there is witchcraft. There is a sorcerer. There is a wizard trying to hinder him. Now listen. Many times, you begin to see people who are not as intelligent as you are being promoted. You see people who are not as intelligent as you are being blessed. There is a witchcraft somewhere. There is the forces of the enemy somewhere. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the power and the presence of God to be able to put down all the witches and the warlock and all the sorcerer down. Bible says and Saul, Paul, the apostle, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he looked intently. You cannot be afraid of witches. You cannot be afraid of sorcerer. You cannot be afraid of warlocks and wizards and all them witches. No, you can't be afraid of them. You've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he looked intently. He said, you are the God of bitterness. And I decree and I declare now that the fire of God is going to come upon you because you are a fraud and the anointing of God. He said, you are the devil, the enemy of all righteousness. And you to cease perverting the work of God. And you will be blinded. Be blinded. If there is any prayer, I'm going to pray on this broadcast today. That is it. That Lord, 
in the name of Jesus, fill me with the power of your spirit. Fill me, O oh God. I lay before you, I humble before you, I'm sacrificed before you, I want the altar of fire. I want to be filled with your presence. I want to know you more. I want to know you deeper. When you feel with the power of God. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Uh, and Jesus said, I have given you power over every snake and every scorpion, over every serpent. I have given you power. You shall tread upon every snake and every scorpion. The church needs to be filled with power. The church is not a place where sorcerers come. But it's so sad today, what do we see? All the magicians and psyche, they are the ones and the false prophet in the churches now. But you need the power of God. You need the presence of God. The fact that there are psyche and false people all around don't mean there is not legitimate and the, the real, the, 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 the original, the, the bona fide, the real fire and the person and the prophet of God. Now that takes me to, to the first king chapter 18. You know, after that, Elijah had killed all the 400 prophets because the fire of God came from an eye. Bible says that Enoch began to be afraid of Jezebel. And he went and sat under the tree, the juniper tree, the Bible says. The juniper, juniper means a broom. If you know anything about witchcraft, they use broom to fly. Hmm? He went and was there and said, God, you're going to kill me. Lord, you're going to take me away. I'm not better than my fathers. No. The grace of God that he's going to give you will make you better than your generation before you. There will be no continuation of any generational causes over you. But that God will elevate you beyond your fathers. And Elijah began to say, Lord, uh, I'm done. I'm not better than my father. I decree, I declare, in the name of Jesus, uh, the grace to be intelligent more than your generation before. The grace to make a distinction. Blessings, blessings more. Not a generational cost, but a generational blessing greater than your forefathers. Uh, Bible says that, that was the blessing that the angel the second time appeared to Abraham and said, you will prevail you will possess your children your children your children children we profess the gate of the enemies you will prevail over them so the bible say and somebody got to stand in that gap to break every generational curse you don't want to be like father like son you don't want to be like daughter like mother like your grandmother was was your mother and was you and was your daughter no there must be at the point that somebody say no the children children must prevail over the gate of the enemies I have an encounter with God at the second time. Somebody got to pay that sacrifice. Somebody got to be obedient to the Spirit of God and lay and set apart. Set apart, he said. Uh, the Holy Spirit spoke, Acts chapter 13, and said, Set apart for me, Paul and Philip, for the work that I've called them unto. And they prayed and they fasted and they set them apart. Somebody got to kill that strong man in the stronghold of the family. Somebody got to stop that curses of uh, how it has been from the generation and generation and generation and a generation and it going 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 and going going and it gone. No, it got to stop. It got to stop right now. It got to stop right now. It can't continue like that. And that's the same God that made a covenant. It now became the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That's what the generational blessing was transferred. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. He, you know, Jacob was a supplanter, but they, they got to have a transformation, and it became it became Israel from Jacob. Somebody got to change it from Jacob to to Israel, and it goes on to Joseph, and that is how the blessing goes on. Hallelujah. Now, Elijah now said, Lord, okay, I'm done. I, I want to come back home. But God said, uh, he, he, where he said something was that, he said, you know, I'm the only one that is left. And God said, no, no, you ain't the only one left. I have 7,000, 7,000 remnants, 7,000 who have not bowed, who have not bowed to the idol of Jezebel. 
And when you read that first King chapter 18 also, that was uh, 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 one of the, one of the uh, uh, what's his name now? And, and he said, he has fed them. He said, I am the one, Obadiah. First King chapter 18. First King chapter 18, and he was talking. He said, First King chapter 18, verse, verse, verse 13. He said, "Hath no one told you, my Lord, about uh, the men of the lost prophet by fifty in a cave, and I fed, I fed them with the bread and water, and that was Obadiah. Oh, but everybody is not false prophet. Everybody is not a fraud. Everybody, everybody is not." He said, "And Elimas, the sorcerer, he was put to naught." Obadiah was saying here, "I have kept fifty. I kept them, and I'm feeding them with bread and water because they was not compromising to the Jezebel spirit and the spirit of Ahab and the, and the idolatry. You got to believe in God and support the prophet of God, not all the all the psychics and, and 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 sorcerers, and seek God with the power of His Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, uh, mm -hmm. and. He told them, he said, in the name of Jesus, immediately he became blind. Immediately. 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 You're going to pray with me as we go on on this broadcast. I'm going to begin to round up now. Now, Lord, uh, let the fire fall on me. Let the fire fall. He said, and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Let the fire fall. I need your fresh fire. I need to be set apart. And then any, any, any sorcerer, any witchcraft, any curses that have been laid by any forces of uh, oppositions and any elements and sorcerer and false prophet and scam and fraud, any devil, any demonic forces that want to lay curse over me, that want to hinder the calling and the assignment and the purpose that you have for me, Anything that wants to hinder me from fulfilling the purpose and the blessing that you have for me, let them be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Holy Spirit of God, that you will fill me, that you will deliver me, deliver my children, my children, children, right now. Deliver my children, my children, children. No more curses. No more curses in the name of Jesus Christ. But at Lord, we ask for your power. We ask for your grace. We ask for the fulfillment of your anointing. We ask, Lord, that you will replenish us. No more generational curses. No more financial troubles and poverty and shame and reproach. And no more sickness and generational hereditary sickness. Going on, going on, going on. Diabetes going on, going on. Cancer going on, going on. And no, no, no more. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask, O oh God, that you put an end that we will be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit. Uh, no witchcraft, uh, no any forces or generational troubles, uh, but that we will walk in the plan of your purpose uh, and no more any of your children going to jail anymore or your children's children going to jail anymore in the name of Jesus. Uh, but uh, the blessings of God will be your portion and the goodness of God will be your portion and the grace of God will be your portion by the power of resurrection. Uh, everything that have been dead negative, uh, everything that have been also all, all the reproach and the forces and the hindrances in spite of the intelligence. He said the pro council was intelligent. He was very intelligent. But the devil, the witchcraft was standing. The sorcerer was hindering him. Uh, he didn't let him fulfill his intelligence. Uh, he didn't let him fulfill the mission. Uh, but until you cast out some devil, until you put an end to the devil, until you shut the devil out, uh, you may not be able to fulfill your destiny in spite of your endowment, in spite of your beauty, in spite of the grace, uh, in spite of the knowledge, in spite of the, 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 the intelligence that you got. Uh, when witchcraft is involved, it's in that you from achieving what God has said for you to achieve. But draw 
Paul said, Apostle Paul, fill with the Holy Spirit. Fill with the say, Lord, fill me with your power. Fill me with your spirit. That no witches and no warlock and no forces of the enemy, no curses and every negative thing that has been said uh, by any evil haters and every adversary. Let nothing in the me in this season. Let not nothing in the my children and we shall fulfill our destiny. In the name of Jesus, uh, and Lord, roll away every negative stone, uh, every barrier that have been put. Uh, he said, uh, roll away this stone in John chapter 11. He got to the grave of Lazarus. He said, Lazarus is not supposed to die now. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Uh, uh, and he called him out. Uh, he called him out. Uh, and he called him and said, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, you're going to call out all of the blessings that have been, that have been hindered. You're going to say, command that the stone be rolled away. The stone that want to hinder your fulfillment of the destiny and the plan and the purpose of God for you. The stone be rolled away. The stone be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Uh, because you've got to walk in the will of God. There must be no opposition. Every witchcraft must be rolled away. Every forces of the enemy be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Uh, every bird, every witchcraft bird, uh, every witchcraft cobwebs, uh, every witchcraft spider that is cobbing the web. You know the song of the of the of the spider. What a web! What a web we make! Uh, and he made a web. And what a web! What a web! What a web! Uh, every witchcraft web. Then every spider web cobbing the web and weaving the web and weaving the web. And what a web! What a mess! Uh, what a mess he made. We call the fire of God to kill them spiders uh, and kill them spiders in the name. Now no, listen, you cannot continue to say, Lord, remove the cobwebs. Uh, remove the cobweb of my mind. Uh, uh, no, no, you got to come to the point that, Lord, kill the cobwebs. Uh, kill not just the cobweb. Kill the spiders. Kill them. Kill the spider. He said, he, he, he declared, Paul, the apostle that declared, he said, yes, you must be blind and immediately there is power that passed the power. The same prophet of Baal is the same witchcraft in the prophet of Baal, the prophet of 450 of them, about, from, of, of, the, of the prophet of, of, of Jezebel and Heab. It was the power, it's the same witchcraft in 1 King 18, we find in Hacks chapter, chapter 13. It's the same thing. The, the devil is the same. The same, the same, same old, same old devil. But some of are going to say, in the name of Jesus, uh, 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 we are going to be the remnants. We are going to be the remnants that are not going to bow to the devil. That are not going to bow. The 7,000 remnants. Uh, the one, the remnant that the Obadiah has given food and given bread and water. We are not going to bow. We are in the cave. Uh, we are prepared and God is hiding in the preparation room. Uh, and God is equipping and feeding them and equipping them with power. And the Elisha that are going to take over from the Elijah. Even for the chariot of fire and the fulfillment of the great commission and the great function of the assignment of the prophetic mandate and the blessings of God uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, every enchantment, every divination, we crush them by the fire of God uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, that this is a season you're walking in the will of God. You're walking in the word of God. You're walking in the anointing of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. There is no witchcraft. Uh, there is no false prophet. There is no no sorcerer there is no any wizard there is no any warlock there is no any medium or saki that can contend no prophet of baal no any baal no any jezebel no any hair spirit that can confront that can overcome the holy spirit of god and paul being filled with intent intent intently 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 bible says he was filled with fire he was filled with the fire of God and he began to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, that the, 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 the he was blinded. Elimas became blind. Say, Lord, uh, anyone that need to go blind, go blind. Anyone that need to go blind for my destiny to be fulfilled. Uh, Anyone that need to go blind for the purpose and the assignment that you got for me. Lord, let it be, let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. I need somebody to pray in the name of Jesus. You know the things, you know what you're going through. And you know what your children have to go through. But there are forces that need to go blind. 
Bible talks about David. David, David. He was anointed for the king. But Saul, because the Bible said the spirit of the Lord has left Saul. And an evil spirit has came over him. Saul will not let him go. In the cave, in the places, in the, uh, Saul kept looking for him. Saul was looking for him to kill him. Saul wanted to just kill him. Saul wanted to kill him. But you know something? Nobody can kill whom God wants alive. The reason why you are still alive is not because of your smartness. The reason why you are still alive life is not because of your knowledge uh, it's not because of your intelligence uh, you are alive because of the mercy of god uh, you are alive because of the goodness of god uh, you are alive because the the, the the lord did not let the devil kill you when he had a chance uh, and nobody can kill him who god has anointed to live uh, and nobody can kill him who god has appointed uh, with, with the grace for an assignment for us this time for a time like this uh, and 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 bible says uh, it got to a point uh, and Saul was sleeping. He was sleeping and snoring like a frog. And he was snoring and sleeping. And the Bible says, uh, uh, and David got there and Joab said, hey David, uh, glory to God today. The Lord has given you your, your, your enemies. Uh, just give me the command. I'm going to shock him one time. Just one time. One time. I'm not going to miss it. Uh, just one time. I'll kill him. Uh, 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 and David said, no. You ain't going to kill the Lord's anointed. Yeah. Even though he's been the Lord's anointed, but the Spirit of the Lord has, has departed from him. So what happened? He said, David cut down the hem of his garment. David cut the part of his garment. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. You're going to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Every of the ones who are looking and uh, who need to go blind, put them to sleep. Put them to sleep in the cave. Put them to sleep in the cave while my children is going to graduate. Put them to sleep in the cave when the blessing is going to come upon my household. Put them to sleep now when I'm going to win the victory. Put them to sleep, Lord, as you give me the victory over them. Put them to sleep. Anyone who is watching and with an evil intention and watching and watching and watching and then trying to in that intelligence and plotting and watching and looking and monitoring and spying on you they are spying on you I decree in the name of Jesus the Lord gonna put them to sleep and give them something something to do to, something to do to, to, to sleep and snoring in the name of Jesus Christ and I say Lord in the name of Jesus anything that want to overshadow you that want to overshadow your glory. That want to overshadow the glory of God and the promise of God and the covenant of God and your intelligence. Bible says and he, he was there. Elimas was trying to hinder. He was trying to overshadow the proconsul. He was trying to overshadow the man. He was trying to overshadow him. What's his name? The, who was with the proconsul? Sergio, Sergio Polos was his name. Verse 7, Acts chapter 13, verse 7. He was trying to overshadow Thegeus Polos, an intelligent man. The man has called for Barnabas and Saul to come and preach to him the word of God. But he was trying to overshadow him. He was trying to hinder him from hearing the word. Say, Lord, every bad company, every bad group, every bad gang, everything that every, helping the children to go in addiction, helping them to go supply them with opioids, supply them with bad things. Every element, anything that is overshadowing them, anything that is leading them in the wrong path, anything that will lead them and overshadow them down to destruction, anything that will hinder them from fulfilling the calling and the purpose and the destiny that God has for them uh, in the name of Jesus, let it be resumed. Uh, let it be let it be consumed now. Uh, he said the fire came on the hot and consumed. Uh, the fire came, uh, uh, and, and, and the Bible says that uh, Elijah put all the prophet of Baal to death in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus, that uh, every every opposition against you for your rising, for your progress, for your prosperity, for you to fulfill the calling of God and the plan of God and the purpose of God uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, let him be put to shame. Uh, let him be put in confusion. Uh, let him be confounded uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now let me read for you Isaiah chapter 50. I'm going to begin to close on the broadcast. I believe somebody's been blessed. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. 
as that chapter 50 verse 4. All right. Let's just read from uh let's read from verse 1. All right. And we'll go verse 1 to 11. It's Isaiah 50, just 11 verses. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 50. And I believe somebody's been blessed. And that's your prayer. That's going to be your prayer, okay? Isaiah chapter 50. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 50. But we're going to read, we're going to read from verse 1 to 11. Hallelujah. It said, Thus says the Lord, Where is the certificate of your mother's divorce? Whom I have put away, of whom my creditors is it, to whom I have sold you. For your iniquities you have sold yourselves, and for your transgression your mother has been put away. Why, when I came, was there no man? Why, when I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Hmm. Indeed, with my rebuke, I dry up the sea, I make the rivers of wilderness, their fish sink, because there is no water, and die of thirst. I clothe the heaven with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. And the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakened me morning by morning. He awakened my ear to hear as the learned. <laughs> That's your prayer. The Lord awaken me morning by morning. Awaken me morning by morning with new grace. Awaken me morning by morning to hear you. Awaken me morning by morning, oh God. When you read from the first one to three verses, Isaiah chapter 50, one to three verses, talking about some generational thing. Uh, the, the divorce, there are, there are people, you know, the, 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 the divorce, your mother divorced, you divorced, your grandmother divorced, your great-grandmother divorced, and uh, your grandfather divorced, your grandfather divorced, your father divorced, your divorce divorced, and divorce it goes on, uh, and you, uh, somebody went to jail, another went to jail, and another went to jail, and every generation, somebody must go to jail, and somebody rot in jail, and, and somebody killed somebody, somebody shoot somebody, somebody was killed, and somebody died of... Uh, 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 some kind of uh, a diabetes or some kind of cancer. And, uh, you know, father, father died of cancer and then another died of, uh, the mother died of breast cancer and another died of cancer and all those things, all those things and, uh, and, and all that. That's what he's talking about. Uh, there are 50, 1, 2, 3. But he said, God has the power to deliver. God has the power to deliver. God has the power to set free. But he wants your humility. He wants you to surrender. He wants you to stand in the gap. He wants you to go up to the mountain like Abraham did and sacrifice uh, and make a commitment and lay before the altar. He wants you to stand like Elijah did and said, no, I'm going to stand in the place of prayer. I'm going to stand and nobody. No, 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 no. The God that has up by fire, let him be God. Uh, and uh, the, the Acts chapter 13, and there was, uh, there was a prophet and the prophet came from Jerusalem. They came. Uh, they came uh, and, and it was there and, and the Bible said they was ministering on to the Lord. Uh, they was ministering unto the Lord. And the Holy Spirit came. And these people were going to speak under the power of the Holy Spirit and the prophet. And we're talking about people like the, the John chapter 4, the woman, the woman, the Samaritan woman. After the sixth man, he said, Lord, I surrender to you. And there was a change. There was a transformation. There was a transformation. And that is, there is, there is always hope in God. Morning by morning, Lord, Given me the tongue of the learned to speak the word, to speak the word. What are you speaking? You gotta change your language. You gotta quit speaking the same language your grandma spoke. You gotta quit speaking the same language your father spoke. You gotta speak quit speaking the language you're cursing and cursing and cursing that your father and mother spoke about. You gotta change your language. You don't walk with God, you don't curse with God. It's a blessing. You must speak the tongue of the learned. 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 Now he said, that a word in season. Say, Lord, let there be a new season for me. 
a new season for me O oh god a new season a new season uh, a new season lord uh, a new season a new season a new season uh, a new season in the name of jesus uh, isaiah chapter 50 isaiah chapter 50 isaiah chapter 50 verse 5 now he said the lord hath opened my ear and i was not rebellious uh, nor did i turn away nor did i turn away now don't be rebellious when god speak to you don't be rebellious when God lead you, when God gives you instructions. Say, Lord, I, I don't want a heart of rebellion. I want a heart that is committed to you. I want a heart that is devoted to you. I want a heart that is surrendered to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I don't want a heart of, of, of rebellion. In the name of Jesus, then Isaiah 6, 50 verse 5. The Lord has opened my mouth, opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. Nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who plucked out my, the beard. I did not hide my face from shape and spitting. Verse 7. He said, For the Lord will help me, therefore I shall not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. For the Lord will help me. Isaiah 50 verse 7. Isaiah 50 verse 7. For the Lord will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. Say, say Lord, I decree and I declare, Lord, help me. Lord, help me, and I will not be ashamed. Lord, help me in this season. Help me in this season. In this season, oh God, I will not be ashamed. Open my ear, let me hear you. Open my eyes, let me see. Open the heart of my eyes, Lord. Open the heart of my eyes, Lord. I want to see you. I want to walk in your word. I'm going to walk in your will. I want to walk in your way, oh God. Make it a new season for my family. Make it a new season in my life. Make it a new season, oh God. Let the hold be gone. Let the hold be gone away. Let the bad be gone away. Let the bad breaks be stopped. Let the bad news be stopped. Let the bad Bad things, bad, bad, bad things happen to some people. Let the bad things be gone in the name of Jesus. No more curses, no more shame, no more shackles, no more shame, no more shackles, no more shame in the name of Jesus. Shall freedom in the name of Jesus. Thou the new season shall shall say is a new season coming now. It's a new season of great truth. It's a new season of blessings, oh God. He said, The Lord will help me. Lord help me. Lord help me me. Uh, Psalm 121 and said, I lift up my eyes up onto the hill and my help comes. Uh, a season of help. Uh, a season of renewal. A season of blessings. Uh, a season of increase. Uh, a season of the goodness and breakthroughs of the favor of God uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Uh, in this new season, no disgrace. Uh, no disgrace, no disgrace, no disgrace in the name of Jesus. No more disgrace, but the grace of God. No more disappointment, but the blessings of God. No more failure, but the success and the glory and the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. No more sickness, but wealth and health in the name of Jesus. It said Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. Jeremiah 30 17. Let's started from 16. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 16 and 17. Jeremiah 30 16 and 17. Uh, he said, For I will those that were oppressing you those that were spying on you, all the sorcerer and the witchcraft and the warlock and the curses. Uh, he said, those that I will, I, will, I will take care of your enemies. That's what he said. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 16 uh, and then in verse 17. He said, and I will restore health to you. I'm going to restore health to you. You need the health of God. You need the help of God. You need healing from God. In the name of Jesus. Let me just read that. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16 and 17. Therefore, all those who devour thee shall be devoured. All those who devour you shall be devoured. Jeremiah 30, verse 16 and 17. Is that in your Bibles? <laughs> and all your adversary, every one of them shall go in captivity. All your adversary, all those ones, all those witches and warlock, all those ones who have been oppressing you, all that have been oppressing you. Jeremiah 30, verse 16 and 17. 
He said, uh, uh, they will go in captivity. No more captivity for you. But all those who oppress you will be the one going in the, in the captivity. He said, uh, he said, those who plunder you shall become plunder. And all will pray upon you. I will make them a prey. Uh -huh. I will make them a prey. Now verse 17 is the good part. He said, listen. For I will restore else to you. I will restore else to you. The health of God uh, comes with the wealth from God. I will restore health. I will restore wealth. God restore health. God restore wealth. I will restore health to you. I will restore wealth to you. I will restore peace to you. I will restore blessings to you. I will restore increase to you. I will restore goodness to you. I will restore breakthroughs to you. I will restore lifting to you. I will restore jobs to you. I will restore money to you. I will restore favor to you. I will restore the grace of God. I will restore good things to you. No more shame. No more shackles. No more captivity, no more pain, no more sickness, no more curses, no more witchcraft, and no more anyone taking advantage of your intelligence. Uh, I'm blocking your intelligence. I'm blocking your way. He said, I will restore health to you in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, restore. The law restoration, 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 restoration uh, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, and I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. I didn't say it. The Lord said it. Says the Lord, the Lord, I will restore it. The Lord, he said, I will restore it. I will restore. I will restore. The Lord, restore. Heal the wounds. Heal the cancer. Heal the diabetics. Heal the pain. Heal the asthma. Heal the whatever hereditary. Heal whatever it is, oh God. Heal the wound, the broken heart wound, the cancer wound, the, 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 the wounds of the heartbreaks, the wounds, the emotional wounds, the physical wounds. I will and I will heal and I will restore, I will heal the wounds. That's what he said. And there are wounds that people can't see, but it, 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 the greatest physician is going to heal your wounds. He's going to heal the scars. He's going to heal the wounds in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, because they called you an outcast, saying, this is Zion, will no one seek. What did they call you? What did they call you? What are the things they called you? Now listen, what are the, what are the things they've called you? What are the things they called you? They called you an outcast? They called you stupid? They called you local? They called you crazy? What they called you? What they called you? What's the name they called you? It don't matter what they called you, but God said, this is Zion. I'm going to restore to you. In the name of Jesus, it's going to restore peace. Uh, it's going, what did the doctor, what did the doctor call you? What did the doctor's report? He said, I'm going to cancel it and I will restore because this is what they say. It's not about what they say. It is about what God say. It's not the opinion of the people. It's about the word of God. Uh, don't dwell between the two opinions. Don't dwell about what they say. Uh, it's about the report of the Lord. Uh, it's not about the doctor's report. Uh, it's not about the finances report. It's not about the evil report. It's about the report of the Lord. It's about the promise of God. It's about the word of God. It's about the thing that God said. And God said, you are blessed. You believe him. And God said, I'm healing you. Believe him. And God said, I will restore you. Believe him. And God said, I will increase you. Believe him. You're going to believe the word. You're going to believe the Lord. He said, whose report will you believe? He said, I will believe in the report of the Lord. Believe the report of the Lord. Believe in the word of God. I receive the word of God. I stand on the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, I'm about out of time now. And I'm going back to Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. Pastor Alicia, the used to bendiga. Isaiah capitulo 50. Isaiah capitulo 50. Isaiah chapter 50, Isaiah chapter 50, and I'm going to continue to read now. Verticulus 4, Isaiah 50 verse 4. He said, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak the word in season. Isaiah 50 from verse 4, and I'm going to read down to verse 11. And we praise the Lord and glory to God. Hallelujah. 
He said that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. And he awakens me morning by morning, awakens my way to hear in the land. Uh, that the Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I give my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plug out my bed, and I did not turn my face. Uh, verse 7, he said, For the Lord will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced, and I've set my face like a flint, and I will not be ashamed. He is near, who justify me, and who will contend with me. Let us stand together with my adversary. Let them come near. Surely the Lord will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? Indeed, they will all grow whole like a garment. Uh, the moth will heat them up. Uh, who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of the servant of the Lord? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Uh, let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Uh, look, all you who can do a fire, who encircle yourself with spark, walk in the light of your fire and in the spark you have kindled. This is this you shall have from my hand. Uh, you shall lie down in torment. That is the portion of your enemies. All those who are plotting against you, they shall lie down in torment. All the elements, the witches, the warlock, the, the forces of the enemy, they shall lie in torment. That's the word of God. And he said, who, they said, this is Zion, who nobody, they, they consider you an outcast, an outcast. And that's what he said here. Yeah. Who shall condemn, who shall condemn me when God has justified you? It don't matter what it is you've done in the past, but when God justify you, when God justify you, when God justify you, verse 8, Isaiah 50, verse 8, Isaiah 50, verse 8, he said, who is it? And he is near, who justify me. He is near, who justify me. Who will contend with me? He is near, who justify me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together with my adversary. Whoever is your adversary, who is it that is contending with you? God is the one that will fight your battle for you. God is the one that will bless you. God is the one that will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, who among you fear the Lord? Uh, let them in counsel. You got to fear the Lord. You got to fear the Lord. You got to say, Lord, here am I to you. Here am I surrendered to you. Here am I devoted to you, O God. Uh, and I have no other God but you, O God. Uh, I have nobody else but you, O Lord. Uh, you are the one that will bless me. You are the one that will make a way for me. And he said, the Bible says that eh, there was a post to Paul. Uh, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. With intently, intently filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, and he looked on Elimas uh, and said, the fire of God come upon you. Uh, you are the adversary. You cannot overshadow. You cannot hinder the man of God. Uh, you cannot hinder Sergius Paulus to hear the word of God. Uh, and the fire of God came upon him became blind in the name of Jesus. I decree in this season everyone who want to block your opportunities they will be removed. They will be blinded. Anyone who want to hinder your opportunity, anyone who want to hinder your blessings, anyone who want to hinder you from moving to the next level, let the fire of God come upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every agent of blockage that want to block you, want to block your blessing, want to block you from moving forward, we decree they be removed by the fire of God. They be removed by the fire of God. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7, it says, for the Lord Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Uh, the Lord will help you in this season. Uh, as you go on the month of the Lord, uh, as you go in the place of sacrifice, uh, in the place of worship, uh, in the place of prayer, in the place of looking upon to God, uh, He's going to send help to you. Uh, he's going to send help to you. He said, for the Lord God will help me uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and every obstacle on your way be turned to a miracle. Every break through barriers will be blown out of the way uh, and you are coming in a new season uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and every power that want to hold you bound, hold you back to your foundation, hold you back to your generation, hold you back and you're going to be the same, like the same, like the same, like your father, like your mother, like other, like all that. Uh, it will not be because when you come in Christ, uh, 
If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away, and all things become new. New health, new DNA, new blessings, new favor, new opportunities, new increase, new prosperity, new progress new advancement for you all things become new all things become new to you in the name of Jesus Christ nothing will crush your dream anymore nothing will hinder you from fulfilling the plan and the purpose and the anointing and the grace and the blessing over you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare a restoration of virtue Restoration of virtue, all that have been stolen. Bible tells us about that woman. She was 12 years with the flow of hemorrhage. Hemorrhage. 12 years. The issue of blood. There are people with different issues. Yours may not be issue of blood, it might be issue of money. Uh, yours may be issue of, of, of uh, children, issue of wealth, issue of. Uh, job issue of uh, uh, whatever issue issues but she said Bible said th she's been everywhere maybe you've been everywhere too and she didn't get no better she get worse and she spent all the money she got with the doctors and they took all her money uh, but God has the answer God has the blessing God has the healing God has the anointing God has, he said in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he was going about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. He said, for God was with him. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. And he was going to the house of uh, Jairus. He was going to heal Jairus' daughter. And the woman said, if I can but touch the aim of his garment. Are you going to say that? After you've had all this word today. There ain't no subject to discussion or second opinion or, or, or any confirmation by nobody. God said it's going to bless you. God said it's going to deliver you. God said it's going to set you free. That is all you need to hold on to. That is all you need to cry on to. That he's going to lift you up. He's going to make a way for you. And you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bible says, and she said... If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know that that's all I got it made. That's all I need. I'll be free. I'm not going to be the same again. And the Bible says she pressed through the crowd. She pressed through the crowd. You need to get out of the crowd. You need to get on to the place where you get a one-on-one -on -one encounter with God. It's not about the crowd. The crowd of the people come on the church every day. And then Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Master, you're talking about we touch. Everybody is strong enough after you. Everybody is touching you. It's not everybody pressing in church. It's not everybody that is in church that is touching the master. It's not everybody that is in church that is filled with the power of God. It's not everybody that is in church that has the encounter with God. You're going to get out of religion. Get out of religion. Get out of a dead church. Get in a place of encounter with God. Get in a place with the Holy Spirit. Get in a place where you pray and we receive the power and the anointing of God. Get in a place where God and the presence of God is honored. The Bible says, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And they was in the place that they ministered unto the Lord. They ministered unto the Lord and the Holy Spirit said. And the Holy Spirit spoke. And the anointing came. They got to a place where they had an encounter with God. And that woman said, If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made old. And she touched the M of the garment. You need to touch the master and say, Lord, this life, this this thing, there must be a change, oh God. There must be a change, oh Lord. There must be a visitation, oh God. I don't want no more story, story, oh God. All I want is to encounter your glory, oh God. I want to encounter with your glory in the name of Jesus. And then the Bible says, Jesus said, no, virtue went out of me.
power went hard of me. When power meet power, when power encounter with the power of God is supreme to any other power, no power of witchcraft, no power of forces of the enemy can stop you anymore. When you encounter the power of God, and the power of God, and the woman came and said, I am, I am the one who touched you. And Jesus said, your faith was made you healed. Your faith has made you hold. Now you're going to go free. You're going to go blessed. You're going to go testify. You're going to go restoration and recover all that have been taken away from you in the name of Jesus Christ. And for 12 years, now she received healing. She received restoration in the name of Jesus, saying, Lord, no more pain for me. No more shame for me. No more disgrace. No more disappointment. I'm going now. He said, daughter, your faith has made you will. He said, go in peace. I need your peace. I need your prosperity. I need your blessings. I need your favor. I need your grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. In the name of Jesus. And I decree the fire in the name of Jesus. We unlock all your virtues. The fire of God. The presence of God. The anointing of God. will release over you. And make a change in every situation. Make a change in every, uh, every circumstances around you. Uh, and you will excel by the power of God. He said Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord that make provision. The Lord that appears where you think is not going to show up. The over Jared, the Lord, the God of provision in the name of Jesus is going to make a way for you. The Lord never disappoints. The Lord never disappoints. He said, the Lord will help me. The Lord will help me. You just got to walk and set apart, set apart, set apart in the name of Jesus. Give him the glory, give him the praise uh, and say, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, and no more depression for me, no more sadness for me. I decree a restoration of joy, joy, joy coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ. And the fire of God is going to make an edge of protection around you. And the enemy can mess with you no more in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. No more embarrassment for you. No more shame for you. But you will testify to the glory of God and the visitation of God. Every witchcraft and warlock and sorcerer and powers of the false prophet and false prophecies they've given you will cancel in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, well, you will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him the praise and give him the glory and say, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Blessed be the name of a God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe somebody's been blessed today. I believe that you received the word of the Lord today. I believe that uh, you got something from the Lord today. And you got to stick on to the promise of God. Stick on to the word and stick on to all that he said is done for you. In the name of Jesus, you don't let the devil, you don't let the devil steal your blessings. You don't let the devil shut you off. You don't let the devil insult your intelligence. He said, Sergius Paulus was intelligent. You're going to say, the devil want to make you look like you're dumb. He said, you're a dumb, 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 dumb ass. You don't know nothing. You're not good for nothing. You're going to say, devil, shut up. Every witchcraft, shut up in the name of Jesus. Say, I ain't dumb. In the name of Jesus, uh, the Lord has given me the the here the the tongue of the learned uh, and to speak the word in due season. Uh, uh huh. You the, the grace of God gonna come upon you, and you you don't you know and don't speak dumb anymore. You gonna speak the word in due season. Hallelujah! I believe you've been blessed, and you want to go back uh, in case you came in the in the course of the broadcast uh, and you didn't get the <laughs> you didn't get the beginning. And, and they say, you're not smart. You're good for nothing. They say, that, shut up. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Uh, and God is going to show forth his goodness and glory over you. He said, the Lord has given me the tongue of the land. to speak the word in this season. And the, the Lord has given open my ear. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. In the name of Jesus. Don't you let the enemy insult your intelligence. In the name of Jesus. But the intelligence is not in your flesh. It's in the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Is that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. 
will teach you all things and it will help you in the name of Jesus. Give him the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. I'm out of time and I got to go. God bless you too. Okay, let me go around now on all the, all the uh, leaves. That was uh, Pastora Alicia Villarreal Gaza. Dios te bendiga, Pastora. Pastora is from uh, 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 Brownsville, Texas. Iglesia uh, Semila de Fe. Semila de Fe. In the number of the Señor, Dios te bendiga, Pastora. Dios te bendiga, su familia, the ministerio. In the number of the Señor. Uh, and we have Cynthia Reed. Cynthia Reed, God bless you too. Yes, I'm not finished and I'm not dumb. Speak it out and you got to declare it, okay? Cynthia Reed. Uh, let me know where you're watching from, okay? I'm Fred Rios. God bless you too. He's just coming in. He's just coming in. He's just coming in. All right. Um, I'm going to go through uh, Jane. Jane Christel, Dehanna Perry. Uh, Gloria Gooden. All right. All right. God bless you, everybody. All right. Let me try and see everybody's name on the screen. Okay, um, everybody who's been part of the broadcast, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And I believe you got blessed today and got a word from the Lord. All right, okay, uh, you make it easy for me when you make a, a, a comment to see your name and to acknowledge you. I see blessing and Tony Florio, Zach Olakule, Oyefeso, be Winston on on. One, one ale. Wisdom. All right. God bless you. God bless you wherever you're watching from. Let me know. Uh, uh, with that again, Dijona. Dijona Gosham. Tina Baye Tibo Aye Tibo. Tina Baye Aye Tibo. God bless you. All right. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, all right, Jane Crystal, God bless you. God bless you, everybody. All right, okay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta invite you to the net broadcast on Wednesday at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. An hour of prayer and hour of teaching on the Winning Word Prayer Hour. Winning Word and Prayer Hour comes on Wednesday. On Wednesday. All right, Fred is from Allingen. Okay, that is close to Pastora Alicia in Brownsville. And Fred is from Hallingen, Hallingen, Texas. Hola, Dios te bendiga, hermano. Okay. Hallingen, San Benito, Brownsville. Okay. Uh, Tex Mex. Okay. God bless you all. <laughs> all right. God bless you, everybody. All right. Blessing to you also, Fred Rios. And I, I believe you will bless everybody. All right. I invite you on Friday to Holy Spirit Fire Hour. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., one hour of prayer, one hour of teaching, and I believe you've been blessed today. Just in case you came at the, uh, the middle of the broadcast in the midst of it, you can have a replay, and you can subscribe on my YouTube. My YouTube channel is Abraham Peters, and I have a like page. If you, in case you have not liked it, I put my teaching notes on that page, Dr. Abraham Peters. You can like that. And you can also get my book on Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Nobles, Dr. Abraham Peters. Give me this mountain. You can get it online. You can get it in a store. And God bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Jane is from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. God bless you from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I used to have a friend, Lacrosse. Lacrosse, Wisconsin. All right. God bless you from Wisconsin. God bless you. Okay. All right. God bless you, everybody. God bless you wherever you are. And if the broadcasts have been a blessing to you, we also expect that you bless the ministry and uh, you can message me if you feel led to be a blessing to us financially and the Lord will increase you and bless you also in the name of Jesus Christ. And I delight that the Lord will increase you and you must go back, listen to this and pray over again. Take notes and declare the word uh, in the name of Jesus. I, I can tell you this, you're going to hear some of the kind of teaching in your church or in your your kind of ministry. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this is what we do. Teach you in the power of the Holy Spirit. With revelation. Okay? Holy Spirit fire how? On Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know Allen Jane, Texas, Brownsville, you got a different time behind, one hour behind. Wisconsin, I'm not sure what time zone you are, but we're in Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. 
in Ohio. And God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. No more strange voices for you, but the angels of God will minister to you. The blessings of God will minister to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's give him the glory. Give him the praise. On behalf of my wonderful woman of God, Reverend Terry, we say God bless you. We love you. And we look forward to hear. You can call us on 567-560-3223. 567-560-3223. And we can pray for you. And we can uh, uh, counsel you in the name of the Lord. But you're going to stand with the word of God, okay? Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He's going to make a way for you. You will possess the gate of your enemies. And no more curses in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. Subscribe on YouTube, Abraham Peters, for more prayers and more prayer videos. i got to go out of time. And I want to say, I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat shalom, shalom, shalom to everybody. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat shalom, shalom, shalom to everybody. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.